Alright, and we should be live. And I'm just gonna real quick swap the audio. That. So I'll get the sounds in my thing, but they won't wind up uh, coming out of the computer. Uh, double check the microphone settings. Alright. So that way, because of the sound gate, the sound effects from the game won't cut in and out constantly. So, spent all morning and early afternoon doing Dominaria Limited. I guess all morning is inaccurate. Uh, if you saw the tweet, then you know. Uh, my brother and I were the only ones who made it on time for the first um, sealed event. So, the place that was running it had the box set aside specifically for prize support anyway, so we just got it for showing up, and since my brother doesn't actually collect, uh, he just, if we do a constructed event, I will supply him with anything from my collection that he needs, so it's just easier on him to not have to care, uh, and just gives me all of the uh, product at the end of any draft or sealed event that he participates in, so. <clears throat> yeah, when he was much younger, he had his own cards because, you know, as a little kid, he wants his own cards. Um, I used to buy him stuff, too. One year, I bought him one pack of every set I could afford to, so from revised up to the current standard set at the time. Alright, well, we got our pack, so let's switch over to talking about that. I do like Garna, if I know I'm going to be able to run her. Uh, Phyrexian Missionary and Lightning Strike are the two cards that most have my attention, and after that, the land, certainly. Lightning Strike, I think, is overall the superior card. Missionary is tempting, though. Missionary is very potent. Just as a 2-mana two 2-3 two, lifelink, uh, she has very good base stats, and for 2 additional mana, you get to Gravedigger back a creature. Uh, I think the Lightning Strike might be better overall, but I do like the Missionary, and she is uncommon, so... I'm going to grab her and see what we get past. Um, now the best card is less clear. We have Warbrute, who has decent stats and Enlist. Enlist has been proving to be a very potent mechanic from what I've seen. Uh, it was definitely super solid in the... Um, Sealed decks that I played against. Uh, one of the things with, especially in red with Enlist, um, uh, red's version of the, uh, creature that has a very high casting cost but keeps going down by one, uh, is based on the highest power among creatures you control. So if you enlist and were to pump, like, say, the Coalition Warbrute with a two power creature, uh, that eight mana thing would drop down by three. Uh, as long as the Coalition Warbrood is still around in your second main phase. Um, I'm taking the Cavalier to stick with White right now, because I don't think the Warbrood is so powerful that I need to move into a different color. Uh, this pack, however, is super underwhelming to me. Um, Hexcatcher is very good for Constructed, but I believe there's one, maybe two Merfolk in the set besides it. And I'm not interested in grabbing that yet. Um, we could just take the healer. We did just pick up uh, the Argivian Cavalier. So it's very easy to tap her. And then attack with my 4 power knight a lot of the times. Uh, she does go better with higher toughness enlist creatures. So the brute that we passed. Alright, now we're get we got the brute before. Now we're seeing a second lightning strike. I think I'm down to grab that over Artillery Blast. I think they're comparable for the most part as far as creature removal goes, but the ability to uh, damage Planeswalkers and your opponent is very, 
very potent, and I think Lightning Strike is probably the best common. So here's the Hellion that I was talking about. So it's an 8-mana 5-5 Trampler, but the power of your creatures determines like how much its cost is reduced by. So it's very easy to get this down to like a 4-mana spell uh, simply by having a 4-power creature already in play. And Enlist really helps with that by concentrating all of your power into one creature. If that creature doesn't die during combat, then you just get to play this thing very cheaply. Um, so this pack is... Like, I don't want the drawbridge. I might take the scout. So the scout is the green one, but it functions based on domain. So... We currently have no dual lands. Uh, unfortunately, both it and the Sunbathing Rootwall are probably the strongest creatures in this pack. Um, although, if we're going to go, if we need some domain effects, we might need to pick up this first to fix. Uh, it does get a land from our deck, and the kicker being white means that since white's one of our main colors, we should be able to uh, upgrade our spell in the mid to late game. Speaking of upgrades, 5-mana uh, 3-4 flyer is okay. Um, two more mana for two more counters. Uh, there's a lot of good reach creatures in the set. With the counters on her, she gets out of range of them, and most of the burn spells too. So, like a single burn spell anyway. So I think we're safe to pick her up over the drawbridge. Um, it enthralled to the pit. Yeah, we're just gonna take Shalai's Acolyte. Uh, 1-3 Vigilance in list is less impressive. Um, I think I'm just going to pick up the Axe. The Axe works very well with the Monstrosity also, by reducing his casting cost by an additional 2 if you put it on your best creature, so... That's the one that cares about the highest mana value in graveyards. Um, all right, I might, as the card I'm most likely to run, if we pick up some mana fixing. Um, all right, combat trick. Or not quite a combat trick. It makes it easier to force your stuff through. Uh, if you have the blue, though, this locks down creatures for a while. I think I'm more inclined to the Furious Blow. Uh, since it adds two power, uh, adds three power, rather, for two mana, uh, can actually reduce his casting cost also in the same turn. Um, I am not a huge fan of Survey. I could be wrong about that. There are probably decks that would want it, but I'm going to take the uh, Enlist creature. All right. So we wield this, but we also wield the Artillery Blast, and we're definitely in white. Like, green... We're taking green cards now because there weren't good cards. Uh, this is the Merfolk that I know is in the set. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, there is the rare. Uh, I didn't switch to it fast enough. I realized I was about to run out of time and tried to take the wall because it's white, and because I'm almost definitely not running Tie Turner. Alright... We have a 3-2 that can pump our team for 5 mana, a 2-2 two -two with a rummage ability, and a white-black dual land that immediately catch my eye here. I would like to be able to kick the missionary and possible uh, other uh, cards if we get access to them. The Vanguard is not terrible, though, and neither is the uh, Picker. But I think I want the land first. The lands are going to keep getting snapped up earlier and earlier, I think. I definitely get the impression that um, five-color uh, domain is the most potent thing you can be doing at any given point in time. Unless everybody is in it, in which case its potency goes way down as the lands become too much of a premium, and getting everything together becomes harder and harder. Um, a lot of very good black cards in this pack. I'm going to take the dual land that fixes for the green now. Uh, 
Mega Black Red Duel. Uh, there's also the Strike Team, though. Um, adds three power. Has haste. Uh, the turn it enters the battlefield, creatures you control have haste. Uh, Kicker makes two one ones, enabling a go wide strategy in white red, which I'm pretty sure is where you want to be if you're going to be white red anyway. Is having multiple creatures you can attack with. Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking the geothermal bog, but now that we've taken a couple of fixers for our other colors. Alright, this one fixes for legendary spells, right? Spend this mana only cast a legendary spell, add one man among the legends you control, exile it, target legendary creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. I think now is a good time to take a war brute. Uh, powerful combat trick, but there are a bunch of good combat tricks in this set, in white specifically, so I'm going to take the large threat that needs to be answered first and foremost. Alright, and we're going to pick up a Captain's Call. We already have the Strike Team. Um, now we're just looking for, like, the white Pump Your Creatures common. Uh, pick up a Premium Removal spell. To take the Root Weaver, since we have a green splash already, but we can also take Steel Crusher. Uh, Steel Crusher did a lot of damage to me in one of my games, but that was primarily because my only creature was the um, was a 5 power creature, and this thing kept attacking as a 5-2, and I did not want to trade my like larger creature for it, but I kept taking damage as a result, and eventually it just pushed through enough damage that by the time I started to stabilize, um, I had already taken too much damage, and their follow-up creatures eventually overwhelmed me. We did wheel the Charismatic Vanguard. Tadiova's going around, which makes me think that nobody's actually in five colors specifically. Take the Vanguard here. Like, this overall is a better creature, but I think we're going to take the Enlist creature as an early play. And I'm going to take the Metal, or the Mana Worker, just in case. Uh, mana Worker's primary thing is to pay, like, off-color kicker costs. Uh, as a 2-mana 1-3, it's not the most efficient creature, but it's also not the worst. <laughs> if your other things are already aggressive enough, and you want to be able to play your spells, it filters a mana without tapping it, so it just fixes your colors just a little bit, and I think that's just enough. Alright. Well, unfortunately, all of the cards in our colors are kind of underwhelming. I think I'm going to take the Love Song. Uh, as a general rule, I feel like you probably want to skip ahead the first chapter. Um, there are situations where you and your opponent drawing is more beneficial to you, despite you having played the card. But those situations feel few and far between... Although I'm probably doing it less than I should be. Alright, so we have a bunch of token makers. This is the common pump spell. I also would not mind Maria's Outrider. Uh, deals damage based on your domain, so we could run like the white-black land and just get an extra damage off of that. Um... So, 3-1 that if we can kick it with black mana. We have one black source, though, and the one robot, the salvage mana worker. And I think Steel Crusher's good enough. Uh, 
It only works on legendaries, and we don't have any, I don't think. So we have a Captain's Call, which makes three dudes, and this uh, more efficient one with Flash. Um, that only makes two creatures, like itself and the one one that it brings with it. I think I have enough like smaller aggressive creatures that we can afford to take another removal spell that gets a large blocker out of the way to pair with Citizen's Arrest. Pull the Hexblade out and the Scout the Wilderness. Yeah, let's take another Coalition Brute to help our Molten Monstrosity out. Alright, how many ways do we have to pump a creature? We have the Axe, so that can always keep Baird online. I don't think I need the other Destroy Evil as much as I can use the Baird. Uh, if our creatures survive to the end phase, when they get boosted by Enlist, uh, Baird will also trigger. Um... That kind of uh, prompts our opponents to trade off, so we need the trades to be bad for them. So that way, they're trading with our creatures um, is actually detrimental to them to try and slow down Baird. Do I want another Destroy Evil, or do I just want another cheap creature? Uh, okay. Okay. I was going to switch to this thing to see just how many cheap creatures I actually have. And our two-drop slot is pretty stacked. I don't know that I would use the 1-3 or another one of those. We'll add this to our list just to have... Like, it's an expensive removal spell, but... I'm probably going to wind up cutting it. All right, we can take this to enable the um, the missionary as another black source. Put that down there. Yeah, we did not get very many of the dual lands, unfortunately. So, on the bright side, since we don't need the green source anymore. Can take that out, I believe. So that's an easy cut. Alright. Let's break down the creatures. Come on. Well, there we go. T colon creature. I can see what we have to work with. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Alright, but this one is a this one is functionally a creature spell, so we actually have ten. That's kind of a creature too. Alright, so Well I'm more okay with like high man oh that's true. I took out the white green duel, but we do have the Shalai. So I'm going to re-add it just as a way to kick her later on. Alright, back to creatures. But yeah, that does have to come back in. 14, 15, 16, 17. Alright, so our land count is still at 17. Alright, so we're going to take out the Fire Nato, I think. I don't mind having expensive spells when my creatures are cheap. Uh, as removal spells if they get rid of the larger creatures that are going to get in the way of my guys. Uh, the fact that the Fire Nato might not even do that and is a sorcery um, kind of not interested. Whereas Destroy Evil gets rid of like high toughness creatures um, so I can get around big blockers. You know, it would destroy a Molten Monstrosity or a Shalai's Acolyte. You know, something that's stopping my 2-2s two and my 3-1s from attacking at all. Um, I don't think we need him. Uh, 
as far as one drops go. Like, he's not terrible, but we only have one green source uh, to get him some counters. So most of the time, he's going to be a one-mana 1-1 one -one with an expensive fire-breathing ability, and I don't think I care enough about that. Um, oh, we do have that one also that can use the green mana. Alright, so I don't think we need the Faith Bonder then. Probably don't need both Furious Bellows and the Axe. Mm. Okay, and that brings us down to 40. We have a very aggressive curve. A lot of two drops. Uh, a few things at the top end to do with our mana. Okay, we do have two of the color. I'm looking at it, and, like, I'm not noticing the two at first, because there's no other cards underneath them the way this one kind of sticks out, so... It threw me for a second, but we do have two of him, which should help us push through damage towards the end of the game. Alright. Yep, I'm willing to try this. Alright, we have a fairly aggressive deck in a format that has a lot of payoffs for running lots of colors and grinding out card advantage, so... Maybe we can catch a few opponents off guard and get some easy wins. While most of their lands are coming into play tapped. Um, yeah, we'll give this a try. Two drop, three drop, possibly four drop on curve. Oh, our opponent has a fairly aggressive creature... Okay, he enders tapped, but he can block. Uh, sometimes the creatures that self-resurrect can't block, and sometimes they can't... They come into play tapped, and sometimes they do both. So... Alright, our opponent is eyeing Baird. He's considering murdering him with a combat trick, or... Yeah, like a minus two, minus two type effect. I'm going to guess. Alright. Uh, two, one... To get my... Yeah, not a combat trick, but a, like, negative, negative effect, I thought. Alright. So the problem with this is that I'm trying to not trade because I'm going to play this 3-4, but that means I'm not attacking and I'm not blocking. So I might have probably considered attacking with Baird first before playing the 3-2. Alright, We have the War Brute to enable Baird, and then we have 1-1s one to block. Alright, we'll see if they play something I don't mind attacking into now. Ah! Neat! Alright, so they have to pay X to destroy X, so... But we're losing this race. So, it destroys each non-land, so they still would be able to bring back their skeleton on a future turn. I take 4, go to 10. They take 5, go to 11. Alright, we still have another one of these to back up the one that dies. This will stop them from being able to comfortably attack us. Like, they probably still will because their creatures are going to die, but... Also, I was not taking into account the life they were going to gain from Samite Herbalist, but that's still a thing, too. So that would have thrown off the race math even worse. Which was already looking not thrilling for us. So, yep, now they're trying to decide how they want to play this out. Makes sense. Try the bottom. Block their 2-1, take 2, go to 12. Eh. 
Okay. Take four, go to ten, and they lose their guy. And land is perfect, because now we get to activate this thing. Attack for seven, and make a one-one that can block the two-one skeleton. So that worked out well for us. And now if they spend the turn destroying all of our stuff, that's fine. Because we're going to be able to slam, like, four and five drops. Okay, they made another two-one. One, two, three, four, five. So we're one man off of being able to kick the Shalai Acolyte with this. Hey, right, let's attack with everybody. Okay, that's fine. Mm. And they gain three life from that. That is less fine, but still happens, so. I was going to say, maybe they do it for zero. All right. So the downside to this is that we can't double spell with what we have. So we need to draw like a two drop. So if they have a removal spell in hand or get one off of their next draw, then we're going to be in a lot of trouble here. In fact, we'll be dead. So, all right, play the swamp. This is the last card in their hand. Kill Coalition Warbrute. They keep mousing over it. No, but it does get them back one of their other creatures. Yep. Well, we'll be going to one. If they can attack us. If they draw, again, if they draw a removal spell or a pump spell or anything, we're just going to die. Because we block the two biggest creatures, we still take four. And they're going, up. Oh, I thought they were going to combat there and we were about to lose. Okay. All right, we need to start attacking. If they have anything, we're going to die, but the more time we give them, the more likely they are to have something. So we need to cut down the number of draw steps they get. Yeah, tapped red land. They might be holding a red spell they can't cast, like a lightning strike or something. Alright. I'm gonna go for it. We have two tramplers and a flyer. Kicker was kind of unnecessary there. Hmm. Does that leave us with enough trample damage to kill them? They gain two back and go to zero? Okay. I'm very curious if they... No, because they played Artillery Blast, so the last card in their hand, 
That was the last card in their hand. Well, we have a fairly aggressive start with Baird. Unfortunately, then we don't do much. We can't even interact with our opponent's, like, first creature, most likely, with just Citizen's Arrest. Alright, I think we're gonna mulligan that. Alright, this seems like a much better hand. I'm going to put one of the mountains on the bottom. We have three lands to work with, and a two-drop and a three-drop. So, we should be able to get a... If we draw, like, five or six lands, that's going to be terrible for us. If we put a spell back here. Ah, uh, second opponent that has a 2-1 on turn one. To mess with my aggressive start. Alright, well, can't be helped. 2-2 two, two enlist. Take two. See what they follow up with. All right. All right, I'm perfectly willing to trade two twos here. And we're going to follow it up with a two two and a one one. All right. Okay, then. Well, the black pile is certainly in our way, isn't it? Um, each draw two cards. And I'll get a 1-1 one, one flyer. Alright, we're just going to play... I think we're going to go for the 1-1 one, one flyer and then put counters on our two creatures. Okay, then. <sighs> yeah, I don't think we want to trade our 3-3. Three, three. For their 3-3, three, three, that taxes all of their mana to deal me a damage. That did hurt an awful lot to lose the flot the other flyer though, more so than the three one ones that weren't going to be able to get through for damage. Yeah, right now we're basically all in on this bird until we draw some more stuff. We don't have a black source yet anyway. We are unlikely to draw one, but it's not impossible. First things first though, I am gonna get in for two. With our bird. Once our opponent realizes that they're getting priority for their war horse, I'm guessing. And only the war horse. I guess we're going to hold on to her. Like, she's not doing anything on this board right now. I was going to say, we kind of want our opponent to... Like, we're going to block with our 3-3. Three, three and see if they go to sacrifice the Blight Pile with the idea that they can pull back the Skeleton afterwards. Since the Blight Pile's not doing that much to us anyway. If we're really lucky, they'll ping us with it first. And then activate the horse and then like to be mana efficient and to get an extra damage through 
Alright, so now that it has four toughness, uh, we will destroy it with destroy evil. Because that is one evil horse. And hopefully our opponent's best play is to just rebuy that thing. Or to draw four cards. One, two, three, four. Oh, right, they only get two of them. And lose two life. Okay. I'm making that sound more... There's a card from um, one of the Zendikar sets. That plays very much like that. Hey, right, well, let's bash for five while our opponent is vulnerable. And I guess run out the Missionary now, since it's holding off the 2-1. And threatening to gain us some life while our opponent's low on life. Alright. That deals us some damage. Yeah, they're not really incentivized to attack us for two there, are they? Alright. Let's get him for two in the air. Oh, right! That thing has reach! Hidden reach! Feel foolish now. Alright. Well, that was terrible. Because I could have exiled it. Yeah, so there are... Hidden Reach is when the creature itself does not look like it has reach at all. Aside from the little tiny icon on the bottom. So... So yeah, I just hunted away that thing because we could have arrested the 4-4. And I don't know that we have any flyers left in the deck now. Um... So, that's unfortunate. They're going to sacrifice their 2-1 to gain a life and scry one and then draw a card. They've chosen to keep it on top, draw it. Yeah, this, this is going to go very poorly now that I've let the bird die. They have a second Conscripts. And they're looking at our Molten Monstrosity. So they're probably planning on killing it, would be my guess. Ah, well, there went my way to get rid of their 4-4. Make our attacks decent. Are you going to let your barricade get involved? Ah. You're going to make it a trade instead of a... Eat. Okay. Oh, we'll still play the Sunlit Marsh. To gain access to our black mana. I don't think there's anything left that cares about it, but... I don't want to find out that there is and I didn't play the land. Yeah, unfortunately, between our opponent's discard and my poor play on that one turn... We're now going to lose this game. Primarily to my poor play. If I had exiled the Outrider before attacking for two, uh, I'd be in a much better board state right now. And they're just going to be able to keep gaining life and drawing cards. They do have to have their other creatures die in order to get back the skeletons, but if they can pull that off... Then, yeah, we're going to lose. And unfortunately, decking is unrealistic when they have a superior board position like this. So. Mm hmm. And now they get to replay. The only thing we have going for us is that they only have the one skeleton right now that they can cast because they only have two black mana. So the removal spell uh, or the sacrifice from the barricade. 
is only letting them replay one skeleton a turn instead of two, but eventually they're going to get past that choke point and we're just going to start losing much quicker than we already are. You know, assuming I don't just die to a 4-4 reach attacking me, that shouldn't even be in play if I've been playing properly. You know, I knew this thing had reach, but I still knew it was going to get me, because it does not look like a creature that should... You know, certain magic cards look like they can block flyers. There's, like, certain things in the artwork. Uh, unfortunately, the bow wielder in this artwork is so small compared to the beast that they're riding. Oh, good, our opponent has just bought back the rare that they milled, and another creature that they can comfortably cast, and we have drawn another land. All right, I'm ready to pack it in now. We have lost this game. Um, so yeah, archers tend to stand out as reach creatures. Uh, spiders, known for having reach. Uh, but there are creatures that just have reach that don't register in the brain as easily when you're looking at them, despite the fact that there is clearly a bow and arrow icon on the tiny card on this screen. And it is very easy to walk into that. More so in Paper Magic, where you also don't get the benefit of the tiny bow and arrow. Um... But because I tend to think in terms of paper magic, I don't pay closer attention to the little icons on them, and so occasionally I run into them. But yeah, hopefully that will happen less, you know, as the set goes on. Hmm, the pets are still glitched. This little bear is just going to sit over here now and hang out. Two two death touch. Um, whenever they have a creature come onto the battlefield, they gain a life. Whenever one of their creatures dies, I lose a life. Okay. All right. So we'll start with this one. Hmm. I wouldn't mind trading for it, but I'm concerned that the trick they have will be the plus one, plus one counter, and then we will lose our creature for basically no value whatsoever. Um... Alright, we'll attack, and we will enlist the help of this one. That might just encourage them to block with their 3-2. Okay, it did not. So we will run out a 3-4. The 3-4 also doesn't block comfortably. The 1-1 one, one counter and indestructible will protect the 3-2, which I'm 99.9% .9 sure is the trick that they have right now. Uh, and the 2-2 two, two death touch will just kill our coalition war brute regardless, even if they don't have that particular trick. So... Yeah, I think we're just going to jam all three of them individually. See if they have... Ah, they have that guy. Hey, right, well... They weren't able to kick him, so the best they can do is eat my 1-1 one -one here with him, which they might do. Yeah, just fine. If that's the best that thing does, I feel like I'm doing okay. Right, and we will skip ahead, I think. I am low on things to do with my mana. Maybe it's not correct to skip ahead. I'm not going to have much after this. Yeah, I think we're going to start off on Chapter 1. So we each draw two cards. 
And I will pass the turn. The so three, four, five, six, seven puts us to six. Is two for that, but gains one back. Hmm. We make the bird. All right. We have two different things we can arrest. Either the 2-2 Death Touch that's threatening our life total with its triggers, or the 4-4 that will never become tapped. And given what I'm trying to play around here, I think I have to exile that first. Alright. Hmm. All right, so they can activate the plus one plus one on the three two. So we want to block here, block here, and block here to encourage that. There we go, there's the take up the shield. Yeah, unfortunately we're very low on life now. So our, we're going to need to kill our opponent very quickly. And they bought back their two spells and gained two life. Which is going to make killing them a lot harder. Um... Also, probably should have had a stop on my draw step, I guess, so in case I had drawn my flash creature that I might have wanted to put. Counters on. Hey. Right. Hmm. See other creatures, other creatures. All right, so I think we need to take him out. Although Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I were to draw the white spell, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh, but I'd still be losing one of these guys, so that would take three damage off the table if I drew it. So we'd only have ten. Hey, right. let's take care of him then. Yeah, we're probably still just dead to the flyer. Or to that idiot. Yeah, we're dead to the flyer. All right. Unfortunate. Hmm. Played that a bit too aggressive with the Elias or whatever its name is, the Ilkor. Ah, sorry. I clicked on the graveyard instead of clicking view battlefield first. Oh. This looks like it's going to be a 1 in 3, most likely. Maybe a 2 in 3. 
But we'll play it out. Maybe I can play properly. The one loss was to my own um, failure to double check the cards. Which is a new set that's going to happen, but it would be nice if I did not walk into the... Usually I'm better at remembering who has Hidden Reach because it is such a thing. Uh, this hand is god-awful horrible, so we're going to mulligan that away. This hand is also god-awful horrible. We are, an, we are an aggro deck, and our only card draw spell gives our opponent more cards also. I might have to just draw a planes here. So we're going to keep this. The question is, how greedy do I get? Do I put back the arrest, since I need double white to cast it? And hope for the best. Uh, this thing is three, so this gets that down to a five drop. I don't think that's anywhere near good enough. Yeah, I think we have to put back the arrest. Okay, we did draw the planes. Now if we can draw like a two drop next turn. No? Okay. Apparently I should have put a mountain back. You know, hindsight being 2020 and all. <clears throat> but I had to assume that I would get maximum punished for my decision. Alright, since the other guy makes creatures when he's kicked, we're going to lead off on this one. Since he has a built-in anthem, we're going to try and cobble together a winning strategy and hope our opponent's deck does not produce enough things as they play a 3-4 trampler that gums up the ground, blocks all of my stuff forever, and just basically makes everything awful for me. You know, the kind of thing you really wish you had, I don't know, a targeted removal spell for to push damage through? That'd be super helpful. Well, now they get to kill my 3-2. That could pump my team. Uh, hit me for 5, down to 13. Raise the casting cost on my other thing, but that's okay. We're going to get that back down. Alright, so we kick this guy. Make two more 1-1s. One -ones. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Put them to 12. Yeah, if one of these mountains were a removal spell, I'd feel great about our position right now. Yeah, that 3, 4 doesn't even want to rumble anymore. It's like, nah, I'm good. Thanks for the offer, though. Hey. Do they have one of the counter spells that will interact with this? They do not, but they might have a bounce. Hey. Hey. It's good for us. That's terrible for us. Yeah, if one of these mountains had just been the removal spell, I think everything would be fine. Alright, so what do their blocks look like? Uh, they put the 1-3... They could use the 1-3 to soak all but 2 damage on this, eat one of the 1-1s, one or try and eat the 3-4, I guess, if they want to risk it, uh, and then kill one of the 1-1s one with the Barbarian with its death trigger. And they would take 2... It would take seven for doing that. Alright, we're not going to win this game if it goes long, so I'm going to try and push damage here. Ah, they're going for the double block on him. Alright, well that means they get to keep their one three. And take eight. Go to four if they don't have it. Okay. Alright, take five, go to seven. And since I didn't kill their Barbarian, they don't get to kill my 5-5 five five Trampler. Okay. Nope. That's fair. Alright. Our turn to benefit from the opponent failing to read their own cards. Woohoo. Well, that got us our second win, so at least we're going to go 2-3 and three now. <clears throat> Let's try and get to 3-3. Three and three. Uh, 
no. We're playing against the Grandmaster. Never mind. We're doomed. Um, and our hand is awful again. Like, desperately needs a mountain and barely does anything even with that mountain by itself. Hey, right, let's get a fresh grip. Alright, now put back this mountain. Alright, lead with the axe. Play 2-2, two, two. it's fine. Well, at least our missionary is going to be amazing if we draw it this game. Or at least it should be. At the very least, it won't be a dead card, so there's that. That's true, it does have haste. Let's get in for three. They're gonna lightning strike it, they're gonna lightning strike it. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't planning on blocking with it, so might as well get in. Well, on top land obviously would be preferable next turn, but just in case that does not happen. Ah, they're missing land. Yeah, I was gonna say they're missing a color. Ah, we did get an untapped land. They're missing a color though. Do we want to equip now? We want to get our three four down. We'll save the axe for a later turn. Hmm. Alright, so we are fortunate they took the three damage, hoping to get a better creature. They might have, like, the Hurloon him or the X damage based on the number of cards in hand. Ah, found a blue land. Alright, so... Can't cast the other guy yet, so we're going to attack here. Play out the monkey, and equip the monkey. Pass. I going to say, they're probably not going to rummage now. Are they going to kill the monkey, though? I'd be fine with them killing the monkey... Ah, uh, they're going to bounce the 3-4 back to my hand. Alright. Play Joyra. Hmm. Hey, right, I'm going to play a 5-5 five, five Trampler then. Pass. Hmm. And they have a 5 damage spell. Hey. Right. I don't want to waste the first strike trick. If I had drawn another land there where I could deploy the War Brute and the Steel Crusher in the same turn, I don't think I want to trade it for their 2 2. I don't think it's doing enough. Then she can play an artifact with mana value X or less onto the battlefield. Hmm. Uh, and they kicked it once, so it's going to have four power, so they're going to steal my one thing, but that's okay. Yep. They borrow him. Yep. Hmm. All 
All right, we're going to arrest the Voldarian or Voldalian. Oh, nope. Cancel that. Uh, pass to blockers. We're going to hit the higher toughness creature. Just tear their board apart here. Uh, two white and one. So we want to play the land in case they have the counter spell based on the number of creatures they control. Alright. Oh, that worked out. Um, yeah, let's give him an axe. Pass. Hmm. Um, yeah, we'll keep our other large creature. Their life total is low enough. One top, two bottom, which is how that works. <laughs> All right, so let's see if they want to trade both of their guys for my guy, and they do. Some to ten. Play another one. We equip the axe to that one. And we pass the turn. Alright. Alright, having two more creatures. Uh, and that does not work. Because neither of them are for toughness. Mm. I don't think leaving my opponent with two flyers, though, is any good. So, yeah, we're just going to offer the trade. Which I'm going to... They're going to take it. And they're at five now. That might have been too greedy. We might be able to get them here if they start attacking now with their flyers. And then they play a large flyer. Like, if that's their goal, that's how they're going to win this game. <sighs> well, now they have to block. Yep. Okay. All right, let's put the Soaring Drake first. If they have a trick, they might try and save the other one by putting the buff on the Soaring Drake. Okay, they're just going to let us go. Oh, no, wait, hang on. Ah, I was really hoping they had a trick there and that we were going to be able to kill their other creature, like kill the Soaring Drake and then trample over their remaining creature. All right, uh, pass the turn. I already played one discard spell, and they might have another. They're two, three. At least all of our threats are uh, enhanced by the axe being on the board. We do need to draw one of them, though. Any one of them would be nice. Uh, we also do get to do four damage with the artillery. So if we decide we want to kill the two, three, that's pretty easy. Well, now we can kill up to a five toughness creature. We are blue away from domain. All right. We're going to get pecked to death by this 2-3 because I'm not willing to spend a removal spell on it yet. Despite it being their only threat. All right. I'll cast her out. And give her an axe. Why not? Now she's four power. That's four out of five for our opponent's life total. I imagine she's about to eat a removal spell, but that's okay. Yep, yeah, there we go. That's fine. That's a lightning strike that didn't hit us, basically. Alright. Time to make our opponent have, like, one of the protection spells, too. Because they're just leaning on that thing infinitely. Yeah, they were just waiting for us to do something before they deployed a better threat. 
Oh, cool. If they don't have a lightning strike for this one, then we get to start making 1-1s. One -ones. Yeah, if they don't have instant speed removal, I'm at least going to get a 1-1 one -one out of this, so... Yeah, they got something to interact with him. And it is, in fact, another lightning strike. Uh, yep. Yeah. Unfortunate. Hey, right, well, we got four turns to get out from underneath that 3-2. That's going to murder our face and draw our opponent a fresh card when it dies for added insult to injury. Ah, great, a spell that does nothing on this board. I mean, it's still relevant if we can get something else. Did we lose the 3-1 with haste? That uh, gives, like, our entire board haste already? Is he dead? Yeah, that was this game. Okay. Well, two turns. Dead next turn. And what's our opponent's one drop? Is it a removal spell? A way to protect their creature? Oh, they had nothing left? Well, that's okay. We drew another mountain. What was their one drop then? Did we see it already? I'm curious now. Alright. Well, no sense leaving the opponent in suspense. They've got this game. We literally... It's our creature, so we can't do anything. Um, I do want to see their graveyard, though. I want to see if they had a one drop that we saw. And it, Oh, they have one shore up. Okay. And they had already used it. All right. Well, that was disappointing because we only managed what two wins there, and one of them was because I punted. <clears throat> All right, let's claim our prizes. Go open our two booster packs. Have my coast. And temporary lockdown. Woo. Hey. Anything good in the daily deals today? Maybe get some more free gems or gold. They just had gems recently, so it's highly unlikely they're gonna have anything. Uh they have some weird Yargle event going on today. Hey. And they have all the alternate artworks with Yargle. Okay. Um, starts in 12 hours. Well, that might be okay for doing dailies or some such, but... Hey, right, well, I'm going to end it there. Thanks for watching. And I'll probably do another one, so if you're you know, lurking in the chat, feel free to stick around. And I'll be right back in a little bit.